The first thing I like doing when uh, putting the, the bottom end of the engine together is all of the threaded holes on the block. I will always take a, a bolt and run them in the holes just to make sure that they, that they thread in well and that I'm happy with them. Uh, um, all the different sizes on this block, there's M6, there's M8, and there's M10. Um, and then the head, the head bolts, which are actually M12. Uh, but what I do is I, I run in a bolt in each hole, and I did find a few holes that had some corrosion in them, so I was able to use a tap and just clean them up. Um, especially when you have an aluminum block, it's a really good idea to clean all the holes, because if you do have to drill and put in a time cert or a helicoil or even just clean up a thread, uh, you know, you're creating metal debris and, and metal shavings, and it's better to have that out of your engine before you put it all together. So I've gone through all the different sides of the engine and uh, made sure that I'm happy with all the holes and there's a ton of them. It takes a little while to do. And then the next thing that I've done is I've put in the, the oil squirters. They are down here at the bottom of each bore and so they squirt oil up at the bottom of the piston which does two things. It helps cool the, the pistons. Uh, heat will transfer from the pistons to the, to the oil and then it drops into the oil pan and it also helps spray the cylinder walls so that they stay well lubricated. I've now put the crank bearing caps on and I've torqued them down and I've done that so I can measure the, the bearing clearances. Now everything should be good but I just want to verify and make sure. For measuring up the crankshaft bearing clearances um, I'm, I've got all new components, well new bearings and everything and uh, I've previously measured up the, the crankshaft and it's to spec, but I just want to verify. So there's a few ways you can do bearing clearances. One way is plastic gauge, which a lot of people might be familiar with. It's, um, it's a little thin rod of plastic. You break off a little piece, you put it on top of the bearing journal, and then when you bolt it down in the engine, you do a dry assembly with no lubrication and just bolt everything together and torque it up. And that little plastic rod will get squished and as it squeezes and gets squished, it gets wider. So then you take it all apart, and there's a little a little gauge that shows you know how wide, you know however wide it gets, uh, shows how much clearance or how many thousands of clearance there is. It's um it's reasonably accurate, not super accurate. I prefer the method of actually taking a real measurement, and I have the tools to take real measurements. So that's the method I use. Um, this is a micrometer. This is a two to three inch micrometer. And I've already um, set it for the exact size of the journals so that it just a little bit of pressure slides on. And whatever the actual measurement is, is kind of irrelevant for my purposes. Because what I'm doing is, so and I now know this distance is exactly the distance of the journals. I'm going to use a bore gauge, which is this tool, which is a dial indicator. On the end, uh, it's got a little anvil on one side and a little push button on the other. When this button pushes in and out, it makes the needle, the needle move. So I've now set this, I've adjusted this, so that when I put the bore gauge in the micrometer, it is, uh, goes right up, I have it set right up to zero, right? So the bore gauge, zero on the bore gauge, is exactly the measurement of the, of the bearing journal on the crank. So right now, as I push the button in, as I approach zero, I'm larger than the diameter of the crank journal. And then if it goes past zero, it's smaller than the crank journal. And the needle will show me, you know, on that little scale, how many thousandths of an inch. So each one of these little tick marks is actually half a thousandth of an inch. So uh, from, you know, zero to, to here to the 45 or the five is five thousandths of an inch. So now back over at the block, I can put my bore gauge into the bearing and you, you kind of rock it back and forth to the point where the needle goes the closest to, uh, you know, to the zero mark. Because uh, if you're a little crooked, obviously you have a little bit of a larger measurement. So you want the smallest measurement that you can find. So again, I can kind of rock it back and forth and I'm coming up right at about two and a half thousandths of an inch. And I can put the gauge into the next one and do the same. And uh, yep, yeah, actually this one's just a shade under two and a half thousandths of an inch. 
and then I can go and put it in the next one and again got the same same measurement just under two and a half thousandths of an inch and then to get the uh, the last two I actually have to take the engine off the stand so I can reach it from the other side but uh, that's that's about standard uh, in the industry for for engines two thousandths two to two to three thousandths of an inch clearance all right it's time to put the crankshaft in um, there's a few things I'm going to do first, and that is lubricate the bearings with assembly lube. Got a little, actually, test here of assembly lube from Miller's Oil. I usually use Torco brand, but a friend of mine uh, who's a Miller's Oil um, representative suggested I try it. So we're going to use that. And the other thing I want to point out are the thrust bearings. So thrust bearings are to keep the crankshaft from moving in the front to back direction. And for the 1.8 turbo, the thrust bearings are a little, uh, little two clamshell set like this. And it's important to note that there is a little groove on one side of the thrust bearings and not the other. That groove goes towards the crankshaft. And so this thrust bearing, one goes, the one with the, the two little tangs in the middle, go on the block side. And there's one on each side of, of that center bearing. Here's the other one. I don't know if it'll stay, if it'll balance in. When I put assembly lube on, I'm going to put some assembly lube on the back side of this so it sticks into place. And then the center, the center bearing cap has a, has a groove that lines up with that tang. So that tang will line up, line up in there. And so again, that gives the, the crankshaft a chance to rub against this bearing surface for front to back play. And then this one goes on that side. I've made sure everything is clean and dust free. Um, sometimes I'll spray it with brake clean just to make sure that it's clean, uh, but I cleaned it right uh, before I turned the camera on. So we will start with the assembly lube. I think that was pretty good sticky stuff, which is what you want assembly lube to be. And then I'm gonna use a nice clean finger and spread it along the bearing surfaces. All right, time to put in the crankshaft. So I've put a little assembly lube on the main journals of the crankshaft. It's all clean, so now I'm going to very gently, carefully, lower it into place. And I'm making sure that those thrust bearings in that center journal don't get moved out of place. Yeah, there they are. Let's see how it rotates. Feels pretty good. So I see that one of these side thrust bearings has just rotated a little bit. So I'm just going to push it back to where it needs to go. Perfect. And now I'm going to lubricate the, the upper caps as well. It's important to point out that the bearing caps have numbers on them, one, two, three, four, five, and they have to go in order, of course, and the number goes towards this side of the block. So if you're looking at the block upside down this way, the numbers are, are on this side, which is opposite the oil pump. So they're, the numbers are opposite the oil pump side. I'm gonna put the bolts in. I 
Ja, 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 All right, before I torque them, I'm just going to make sure it spins freely. Ooh, it does. Real nice. Nice and sticky. Sticky spinning crankshaft. And I'm making sure that my thrust bearings are in the proper location, and they are, so that's very good. Now to torque them down, the factory spec is start with 48 foot-pounds and then do 90 degrees rotation. So I'm going to start with the 48 foot-pounds. For the 90 degree torque rotation, you can just eyeball it if you have no other means to do it with a breaker bar. Figure out, okay, this is my starting position, this is 90 degrees. But I have a torque angle gauge, little meter here, that um, I have it set to 90 degrees. And so when I start it, it's at zero. And as I turn it, it will count up and it will beep when I hit the 90 degree mark. And that's just an easy way to do it. Huh. Tripod's in the way. There you have it, all torqued down, spins nice, real pleased with that feel, with that fit. The last measurement I'm going to take from the crank for now is crank end play. So again, we have those thrust bearings and that middle journal to prevent the crank from going this way. You don't want it to be too tight, you don't want it to be too loose. Um, so what I do is I use a dial indicator on a magnetic base and I put it so it's right against the nose of the crankshaft, it could be at the back of the crankshaft doesn't really matter and I have it set so that when the crankshaft moves forward when I push the counterweights all the way forward I've lined it up right at the zero mark so then when I move the the crankshaft rearward it goes up to about two thousandths of an inch two two and a half thousandths of an inch um, which is is good yeah two thousandths of an inch is what I'm getting which is just fine so it's again with all that assembly lube and especially the assembly lube on the thrust bearings it's uh, You don't like hear it move, but definitely you can feel it move, and I can see it move on the dial indicator.